Hey, Cock 45. As you can see, it's 1911 day at the compound. Are those pretty or what? That's a classic design. Pretty, pretty guns and very functional, right? Let's try one of them out here. With my ears on and uh, load it up. And uh, I think I had a magazine. Oh, ah. I tell you, this gun is on loan from uh, Academy of Self-Protection in Jolton. We appreciate that uh, immensely. But they really do need to spend some money on magazines, don't they? I think I've got a better one. Yeah, here we go. What's wrong with them? Yeah, there you go. Put a Colt magazine in it. <laughs> See if it works. All right, I've just taken a couple of shots with it. Let's make sure it works. Ha <laughs> nice. Sweet, sweet. <laughs> oh boy. Let's see where the sights are. I'll try that two liter out there. All right, on the last shot. Nice. We're not going to shoot a thousand rounds, but we did want to bring you this, especially this uh, Series 70 Colt, okay, 1911. And uh, the reason we had the others out here, we're not going to do a, a big detailed historical uh, analysis here or anything. We might do that sometime. But we have them in a line here. I thought uh, before we uh, talk a little bit more about the Series 70. Whoa, it's bright. Uh, and that is stainless too. It's not nickel, by the way. So I just happen to have, now that this one here is here for the day, uh, again, thanks to Academy Self Protection, uh, we have kind of a sampling of the various features of these things. This is the remake, reproduction of the, uh, what, the 19, what, 18. So that's the way they were basically Colts originally. You know, you had a long trigger, you had a flat mainspring housing, you didn't have some of the contour cutting here. Uh, you know, uh, you got a <laughs> beaver tail that's uh, less than desirable. If you want to get pinched, shoot one of those and your sights are not so hot. You know, you just got little sights and everything. So, uh, but that's the original configuration, not bad, it worked. I mean, in fact, I could shoot one of these all day and thoroughly enjoy it, uh, other than the pinching factor there with that short beaver tail. You know, I, I really like the feel of, of those. That's, that's the way they were up until the 20s, 1920s, okay? Then we had the A1 style, and this is World War II vintage, but basically, you know, the A1, the uh, arch mainspring housing, short trigger, uh, it's got the same short, uh, you know, safety there you got a better beaver tail you don't get pinched so much at all really i don't on with these they increase the beaver tail length just a little bit as you can see and you know those were the biggest differences there's some other mine we're not going to go into all the all the detail of it but those are the biggest differences uh, the beaver tail and then that mainspring housing and the, and the trigger and uh some internal but nothing significant okay and then uh, they didn't really make any for the military after World War II. Uh, they, uh, the, the ones they did make, uh, the commercial ones, they took the lanyard ring off, as I understand. And then they increased the shelf on the uh, thumb safety there. You see how short that one is? Well, this is a Series 70 to get more of a shelf, see? And there's some other differences maybe, but those are the, the main ones. So this is the 70, the Series 70s. Okay, now this is a reintroduction of the Series 70 that uh, Cole has come out with in the last few years. So it's very much like the ones that were made in the 70s, except uh, the 70s model, what they did with a bushing, if, I'm not gonna take one apart today, but if you're familiar with the little bushing that goes around the barrel and the end, they, uh, they put a fingered kind of collet bushing around that, had four, I think four little fingers, because I had one back then, and it kind of grabbed the barrel more tightly, and they thought that added to the accuracy. And uh, that was one of the biggest differences there. And uh, this one does not have it. They, and in the remakes of the Series 70, they, they use a standard uh, bushing, thankfully, because I wouldn't want to deal with those too much. And the sights are a little bit higher, I think, on, on this remake of the 70s. And it was not available in stainless back in the 70s. But other than that, you know, it's uh, the same gun. Yeah, okay, it's pretty neat because I had a Series 70 and uh, it's neat to have one back. And this is, I brought this one out too. This is a Series 80. And uh, this is the 1991 models, it's called, which in a way is kind of a throwback to the originals because it's got the flat mainspring housing, the long trigger. It's got a nicer beaver tail. It's got the A1 you know, beaver tail that these uh, later ones have so you don't get pinched. It has better sights. And, 
you know, all that it makes it feel better and be a really good shooter, but still pretty much true to the original 1911. It's, it's a, if you want a 1911 that's really shootable and it's pretty much uh, just like they came out, this has always been a good choice at least since they came out with it. Now, the big difference in the Series 80 is they have the firing pin block, and a lot of people don't like that at all, the gunsmiths especially, but uh, it's got the firing pin block, just like a Glock has and the SIG and all the modern pistols, all right? Whereas those don't have that, right? None of those do. Because in the remake of the Series 70, the, you know, it doesn't have that either, okay? So I'll just kind of give you a rundown of uh, the, the variations of it there without going into too much detail. But mainly I wanted to show you the Series 70 because the Series 70, uh, since, since those guys had it down there, uh, when I walked in, they were showing me this. I thought, cool, because that's when I got into firearms in a, in a bigger way. And my first 1911 was a Series 70. And I'll let you try to figure out why I bought a Series 70 instead of a Series 80. Because when I bought it, it was about 1974 or 5, probably. But you can figure that out, can't you? I ended up with a Series 70 somehow when I bought my first new Colt. It was blue. I later converted it for competition and put a Bomar sight on it, some stuff, which, you know, I could kick myself now. I'd like to have it in its original state, but I traded it off for something. Yeah, we all have done that. So this is kind of neat because it's a Series 70. And like I say, the only difference is the collet bushing. It doesn't have that, uh, thankfully, and it has higher sights maybe. Uh, and the owner has replaced the, uh, the grips on it. Okay, so we got kind of, he put custom grips on it. So it's a nice looking gun. Now the other thing he did, it is stainless, but it doesn't come this shiny. He had it polished by a local gunsmith here. He did a wonderful job on it. I mean, it looks like nickel, doesn't it? So pretty cool, Series 70. There's a, almost a cult following of Series 70 1911s. They're just really cool. Now we're also shooting Federal ammo, I might point out here, thanks to Federal for Furnishing that big old 45 slugs 230 grain put the safety on lay it down. It is hot It looks hot doesn't it now? I've got a holster. I thought it'd be appropriate uh, This is I think the first 1911 holster I bought. It's an old safari land. It's suede lined so even while the owner of this gun might not uh, really take that much pride in his firearms because he uses a magazine like that. I do, and uh, I didn't want to scratch it, so I'm going to put it in this suede lined holster, all right, so I don't scratch this beautiful finish. You know, this is the holster, right, when I went to my first IPSC match, uh, that's all I had, I remember using that one, and uh, I think they told me I had to snap it, because if it had a snap, I had to snap it. Uh, I could have cut the snap off, but since it had one, I had to snap it uh, <laughs> for the actual matches. I was so green. I was so naive and ignorant, even more so than now. All right, now I'm not going to do too much shooting, but I just love having a Series 70 back at the compound. So let's go into slow motion and shoot. <laughs> oh, cool. Let's try that other two liter. Pow. Oh, it feels good, I have to say. I don't like the arch mainspring housing, but uh, for some reason it doesn't hit me too hard there. Let's just go out to the gong. Oh boy. <laughs> hey, I got two points, that one went in my pocket. Ooh, it's hot, how'd it get hot? I know what it was. That was the, the casing from my miss, and uh, it wanted to keep me a souvenir, right, for my, to remind me of my miss. Yeah, the, the Series 70 is, uh, people collect these things. They, they love to find one. I'll lay it down there and let you look at it. They love to find one, like new in a box or something, or just really good shape. Because uh, partly, I think, uh, uh, there's a certain aura about the Series 70s because it was before they made that horrible switch to the firing pin block, which some people just uh, abhor. But, uh, you know, it is, it's, it's all Colt. Colt does a good job, I have to say. I know uh, I am a little bit of a Colt fanboy, I guess. I grew up, I have an excuse. I grew up in an era when that was all there was, basically, the Colt. If you wanted a 1911, it was a Colt. 
and then Springfield sort of got into the market and uh, it's nothing like it, it is today uh, it is, you know same with ARs you know there's Colt you know who else makes an AR you know Colt makes them you know, Colt makes the 1911s and of course they still do a good job they're uh, they're they're a little pricier than some of the other companies uh, for what you get you know just a basic one like this there's no bells and whistles on that gun and any Colt you buy like that it, it's going to run around a thousand dollars or more you know eleven hundred so uh, they use a lot of lot of uh, forged parts though and everything so they're, they're uh, they do a good job all right let's just take a couple more shots with it it's a stiff safety it's uh, like a new gun all right let's uh let's pretend uh we're actually speed shooting a little bit uh, i'm gonna move down here and just play a little bit with these two mags an old stock 45 just feels good though just a plain old stock 45 will get the job done you don't really have to have a custom gun even though they're more comfortable no doubt about it this kind of stiff safety i'd have to get that broken in if i was going to go into speed combat with it so let's pull it out in slow motion and get that safety off. There we go. <laughs> and we might just be down to about one round, so let's put another one on the gong. Oh, sweet. Yeah, that is nice. That is nice. Let me buy one more magazine. I know you'll forgive me if I shoot one more. I don't want to wear his pretty gun out. Uh, so I have another loaded one now. Let's load one. All right, this is one of the stock mags. Yeah, good old 230 grain hardball ammo. Oh uh, man, when you think about the price of this stuff, uh, it makes it all the more welcome <laughs> to have it donated by uh, Federal. Sure appreciate that. Appreciate the loan of this fine gun. You know, I sort of, I know these guys down at the Jolton gun shop pretty well, and uh, I might just keep this. Somehow I could hold it hostage, I don't know. Make up some story about losing it. All right. Nice gun, nice gun. What do we want to shoot here with 45? How about a tree here? Sweet. Uh, I just had to shoot one more magazine. So anyway, that is a, that is a Jewel uh, Series 70. It says it right on the frame or the slide, by the way. Mark IV, you know, Series 70. It is, uh, you know, what it is. So it's great that, that Colt has, has brought these back you know, in this configuration. Really nice shootable pistol, no doubt about it. So I guess say 1911 is, you know, there, there's so much uh, history associated with them. And that's another reason I think that uh, there's a certain fondness, you know, for the Colt or any of the early models. But uh, they're just they're just neat, you know. And uh, you may not want to carry something like this. They are heavy. Uh, there may be too much recoil for you, you know, to shoot comfortably. But still, it's it's just one of those firearms that most avid shooters, people who are pretty interested in firearms, they uh, they have it on their bucket list. They want to own one. <laughs> they at least want to shoot one. They want to fire one. And with good reason. Nice big old 45 cartridge is fun to shoot. It doesn't really kick that hard. It just kind of pushes you a little bit. Uh, it's not even really that snappy. It's just uh, just a heavy you know round. But uh, the Series 70 is one that a lot of people lust for. And so I'm glad to, to have one back uh, in my hand. It's been a while to actually fire it. Life is good.